Thank you for joining Our Energy Matters with Anthony Mana and Dina Marie. Aloha. Aloha. Here we are again. Wonderful. Episode number 36. And I want to say mir vushavanya meru to our Ukrainian listeners and viewers. Translated peace, survival, and hope. And I probably just slaughtered the... Um, Ukrainian language, but I tried, <laughs> and it's uh, meaningful to me these days as we are in the middle of a skirmish. So here we are in part two of the, uh, we started this last session, characters with blocked or too open chakras. And um, do you want me to go on? Yeah, sure. Okay, because I think we need to explain to people this is the first time that we've been meeting uh, by phone first for quite a few times after you interviewed me on your deli delicious radio station, radio show, uh, Lift Your Spirits. And uh, you talked to me about my children's book, uh, Lucas and the Game of Chance, and interviewed me about other matters as well. And then um, I found out about uh, your book, um, Our Energy Matters, um, The Art of Crystal Reading, learn how to manifest your heartfelt intentions. And it took off because I am learning and I am receptive. And so then I started writing small pieces of writing, uh, of uh, my responses, I should say, to what I was reading in your book. And so, and here I am today, I'm saying I am writing I am an old guy still writing stories, journals, remembrances, and with Dina Marie still learning the bright, sparked choices and maneuvers that promised me the blessings of a life fully lived here and now, mindfully, with compassion, goodwill, and loving kindness. Each time I enter Dina Marie's peaceable kingdom, her oracular treatise of a book she named our energy matters, the art of crystal reading, where you can learn how to manifest your heartfelt intentions. And that be, the heartfelt intentions business, I have to stop right here because it becomes a meditation for me. Um, in that I, and I forgot to do that today during my meditation, I forgot, but usually what I do is I find one thing one small thing here and now, it, it, it anchors me in the here and now when I say, what's my intention for today? And it can be as simple, simple as um, take a walk, <laughs> you know, call your son, you know, whatever. And it, it really helps me a lot. I fathom in her book, the consecrated depths of what seems a joyous symphony of melodic rise and fall movements, a crescendo of life-saving revelations and welcoming rifts on beliefs sustained by curative truths. Move with her seekers, her clients, beyond the threshold opening to Dina Marie's, I call her Lady Grace, Lady Grace's, and then I call her a celestial alchemist, that's my best, domain, and you will be guided to come home to the best part of yourself, celebrated by heart, soul, mind, spirit, body, comfort, solace, renewal. Awaken to practical and practice divination, divinations of creative spirited reflections and affirmations of self-love and a deep, deep longing for a compassionate connection with yourself and with others near and far, near and far, resounding her clarion call for harmony and peacefulness close by to home and beyond to the far reaching community. Come, she calls, come and unbind your chakra truth. Those energy vortexes or discs as Lady Grace calls them, discs that distribute universal life force energy throughout the body. Clear up your chakra blockages, she calls out, and a priestess at that point, and open yourself willingly to a fully lived, healthful life aligned with your heartfelt and soulful intentions. 
as I noted in a previous episode, or as we both noted in a previous episode of Our Energy Matters, in her book, Dina Marie imagined darkly amusing fictional characters that personify each of the seven block chakras. And sometimes I find myself there, you know, that's good too. So listeners and viewers met, for example, they met crown chakra Debbie Downer, who brings everyone down, down, down. And then there's fifth chakra, Kathy Chatter, Kathy Chatter, who grew up in a home where there was no communication unless it was criticized, being criticism, criticism, critical. So, so now she loves to talk, 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 and talk some more. Dina Marie, Dina Marie, let's talk about Harry Heartless before we go on. Harry, Harry Heartless. I, I have to mention too this morning, this is relevant, is that my five-year-old granddaughter, we woke up and I tried to give my daughter a little bit more sleep. We counted our intentions and did our blessings. And she's a Kathy chatter, right? So as soon as she looked up and she started thinking about what she was thankful for, you know, the third eye, she she, she go, well, let's play the quiet game. I said, ooh, that's one of my intentions. Just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, it was a beautiful morning. <laughs> that's great. What a great transition, you know? Wonderful. So Harry Heartless is, uh, you want me to, I'll read what, what yeah. he is. And you can, yes. you can, uh, you can um, personify him further. He purposely says things that make people cry. You know, I almost cried when I heard that because I've been around people like that, especially in the academic world where people would say something very critically nasty about your my work. He feels satisfaction at his job when he makes the big deal, even if someone else has done all the work. Ooh, I don't like him. When Harry has a bad day, he likes to take it out on his family, including the dog. Harry's mom died tragically when he was only 10 years old. That's sad. He swore he would never feel that way again. And he said he would never forgive God for what had happened. Harry has a blocked fourth chakra which that's your heart. His heart is blocked and he blocked it purposely to protect himself. Uh, it happened. That's, it's called a bully, right? The bullies. Usually my son had somebody say horrible things about him for a year or so. And finally my son said, mom, I think I, I had him in a headlock. He lost it on the bully, right? <laughs> Cause I don't remember. It was like PTSD on this bully. But as soon as they got pulled into the office, the bully started crying and crying and praying, please don't bring, you know, saying out loud, don't bring my dad in here. Don't bring my dad in here. Because he was afraid, because he'd been bullied too. Bullies usually are bullied also. But it was weird because crying was what opens up a heart chakra. So it was strange because my son's like, he was so weird. He just kept crying and, and it was, he wouldn't stop. And, but energy is blocked when we make certain decisions and his energy is pushed down below his heart because his heart is blocked. So when the energy has to arise, because that's PTSD, it will come up eventually. That's when he's angry and mean and he hurts people's feelings because he uses this in a not very nice way. So he needs to cry. So when I have some people come to me that cry on my table for about two months, <laughs> that's that little boy who never got to cry because he lost his mom, right? So big boys don't cry causes a lot of issues especially military sports and that type of thing. So yeah. grief. Grief. And then, you know, I, what you're bringing up to me too is having spent so much of my academic career working in schools, you know, I saw it happening. I saw bullying going on, but then you would meet kids who would talk about that and they were devastated uh, so much. So, you know, that, I mean, I hate to mention this, but then, just, you know, you hear it in the news where a young girl had been so slaughtered by bitterness among her peers that she committed suicide, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, it's very sad, you know, so we need to take, we, we need not to take it lightly that bullies are nasty and they need help. And, and we just have to find ways to stay away from them, but a lot of time it's, it's parents, it's family members and, and people put, put, put up with it. I had um, a Vietnam vet uh, uncle who lost his leg and he was mean to me. I don't, I told you this before, like he'd call me over in front of everyone and trip me and everyone knew he was going to do it. Right. 
but that's, he needed that energy from me, the crying, right? He was going to make me cry, but really he needs to cry. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you bring up so many, you know, right now my mind is like, you know, of all these images of, you know, of, you know, being, being in a situation where I was bullied, you know, and then um, not really knowing what to do with those emotions. And then eventually in an older time, it was therapy that helped me. Samantha sympathetic. Ah, ah. She volunteers at her church, her children's school, and the woman's, the women's mission. She has a hard time saying no and feels guilty if she does anything for herself. When she was younger, her parents argued about money. When she needed anything for school, she would never ask her parents and learn to go without. She wished she could fix her parents and that they would change, but she is often disappointed. Samantha has a much too open second chakra. So that's your sacral chakra. That's the power chakra is that one where someone's mad at you. You can feel that. The sacral chakra is your connection to the people closest to you. It's um, actually, it's your sexual center. It's your root. It's like part of, not the root, but the root is where uh, you're grounded. The, the sacral is when you start to, to grow and that's your stability. And so I have to say, I'm sympathetic, uh, Samantha. <laughs> that's who I am at 25. I was a bend over backwards, the martyr. I was always doing for other people. I would never, ever buy anything for myself. Absolutely not. And the word guilt, the guilt. I said, I feel guilty. I felt guilty when someone else stole something and they announced it. I felt like I did it. And it's because my mom was super not close to me. She wasn't close to me. She wasn't nurturing. And that's what that's that, that, um, like what I do with my, my granddaughter, we're like nurturing each other, just visiting and talking and being there for one another. And when you're live, living in a house, that's kind of stoic. You become the martyr. You, 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 you want to people, please. You want everyone to see you. So if you're volunteering too much and you're, you're just wanting people to say, good job, Dina. Right. Yeah. So what we have to do is self-love 101. I had to buy myself flowers. I had to maybe treat myself to something. I had to, every time something felt guilty, I did it anyways. And I never feel guilt. I don't even, I don't even know that word anymore, but I lived with that. And now I just, if I want to buy something, I buy it. But before I could never do that. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the thing that I, I, that I'm picking up here, that is another part of your book and, uh, and another chapter in, in life is your uh, remedies, your prescriptions for blocked chakras. And what you were just doing is in the, those pages are so valuable because you give yourself permission and then you give others permission to carry out and carry on and do things for themselves like burning of my journal pages. You know, mm -hmm. it was a journal that had a lot of pain and a lot of agony in it. And I kept it on my shelf and I said, no. And you said, no, what you can do with it is, I said, what am I gonna do? And you said, just burn it, you know? And it was, all I could think of was the incense that I that I was so much privy to in the Catholic church, you know, and, and that, that, that smoke that goes up, you know, and this, the scent that goes up and just disappears. And it's like, um, you know, just allowing yourself the freedom. Um, you know, and so those prescriptions are so important. We probably need to go over them again sometime. And maybe it's forgiveness, forgiveness of ourselves for putting ourselves in positions where we're, we kind of blamed ourselves, you know, but blame is another sacral chakra issue. You're always blaming yourself. It's me. Why me? Why did I? And, and there's a point where like, you have to open yourself to receiving, I say, the abundance of the universe in all its forms, but love of self. Like you say, be kind to myself. You know, have a relationship with yourself that's loving and, and authentic and kind. And then we probably won't attract those people from our past anyways, right? Right, right. No, I and know we're that's just, the, that's the past. That's, let's, let's let it go. Let, let it go. And then you just gave me, um, uh, uh, let's see, a signal. Let me put it that way. 
to what I, I it comes up a lot in my morning manifestation of my um, intention for the day, which is be kind to yourself. Anthony, be kind to yourself, you know? And uh, I have to keep reminding myself of that, you know, because there were times in my life when I, when I wasn't at all kind to myself, you know, and I don't want to slip back into that. And I think I'm getting better at it of, you know. It's a practice, it's a practice. The practice, yeah. And then also just, um, you know, as we were talking on the phone quite recently about the fact that you, you, you want to find your spiritual center, you want to find your soul, you know, and you want to talk about that and not be shy. I mean, I, I kind of stay away from the word soul because it sounds so mystical, but it's not. It's the, it's, it's our very being, you know, that, uh, at, uh, I was listening to, um, a, uh, a philosopher on a disc, a, a CD, and he was saying, you know, welcome, you know, welcome God, the goddess, the spirit, whatever you want to call it, back into your soul into the sacredness of your soul and i thought wow hallelujah i just loved i loved hearing that and then uh, more final would be steve stuck and i love it i love the fact that it's s-t-u-k <laughs> <laughs> can't seem to keep a job he lives with his parents and lost his driver's license due to unpaid speeding tickets. He feels stuck and can't seem to motivate himself to do anything other than sleep all day. Well, the poor guy. When Steve was younger, his family uprooted and moved every year. He never felt like he could get attached to anyone at school, so he learned to play alone. Steve feels his parents owe him, and he blames them for all his problems in his life. Steve has a blocked first chakra uh-oh <laughs> so that's your root chakra and i had so many people come to me as a hypnotherapist with that problem they sabotage themselves because in the past they were promised something or uh maybe they got a friend a new friend and then they moved and then they um maybe the the military the military that you constantly make you have to make new friends over and over again or move in different locations but you will sabotage yourself. So if you even get something nice, and this is my my first husband, I've had to, but he got it. Anything we got nice, anything we got nice, he would ruin it, literally wreck a car or lose a job. And I was always playing cleanup because remember I'm the sympathetic Sammy. Or whatever. And I realized that um, later on that his family had financial issues and they would just pick up and leave in the middle of the night. They would oh, move <laughs> because they had no money. So no money, that's the root chakra, uh, your survival and, and having to make new friends over and over again. And, you know, I didn't do hypnotherapy or anything like that back then, but I definitely would have went back to his childhood, did some healing on that inner child who didn't, you know, some people, I have a, a, a person who was given a bike at Christmas and after Christmas, they didn't have money. So the bike was taken back. Ooh. That's what some parents do to their kids, and that traumatizes them financially, right? The why bother um, pull the rug out from under me before someone else does? And I really believe that hypnotherapy it can help, but it's inner child work going back and and you know I also have a client that she did it so much that I actually told her that she'd have to live in the same place for a long period of time <laughs> because she would do it to herself. So she's been living, you know, gosh, now it's like 15 years in Alaska and she's super happy, but she had to make herself stay, stay put. Well, yeah. And you know, part, what I was hearing too was worthiness. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Worthiness. What a big one that is. Do you feel worthy enough to treat yourself without feeling guilty? Do you feel worthy enough to find a really good partner, to find a really good friend, you know, and on and on it goes. I just love that. I love it. And I the, love root, it. the root chakra is your foundation. Then there's the sacral, which is your relationship. So we have to build on something or it's, it's that sand, right? The tide comes in and everything you um, worked for. So, you know, you have a nice car and then you, you pay the bills and you take care of it and you get the oil changed. Then you move on to the other things, but you, you have to take care of your body, especially that's the root chakra. Your physical body. The root chakra. That's so, the root chakra. Yeah, I, I, I almost want to go back to those prescriptions again with you, uh, maybe next time, 
because I think they need to be repeated. I mean, I just loved when I've, it was like a breath of fresh air and I, I'll just promise our listeners and viewers that maybe next time uh, we'll talk about it, but I, I'd like to go over some of those again because, well, because why? What's the moral of the story today? The moral of the story is I'm reading from your book, clear up your chakras and your every wish is our universe's command. Amen. Amen. Namaste. Namaste. So, <laughs> so folks, we end here. And if you want to move closer to Dina Marie's wisdom, then listen to her weekly Friday radio show, Lift Your Spirits on 1150 AM KKNW. She hosts or she invites hosts, but I've been a, um, a guest several times and, and I, I felt so so um, worthy, so so worthwhile, <laughs> and so happy there. You know, when and I, whenever I watch it, it's it's delightful. There are musicians and you know, writer, uh, authors, writers, etc. And it's a very it's a very uplifting. Well, lift your spirits. Her her website is dina-marie.com, and you'll find some re really precious um, soul giving uh, healing. A healing work there and uh i just i really love going back there from time to time my website is anthony manna that's m-a-n-n-a -N -N -A, anthony manna books.com for an interview with dina marie just go to the media section uh for my pod pod bean podcast interviews and there you will find dina marie and also if you have children or teens or tweens and you want them to become good readers and writers. That's what my website is all about. And I, I treasure it. Dina Marie, thank you. Until we meet again. <laughs> Anthony Manna, Manna from heaven, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> all right, till next thank week. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. And thank you for Bye -bye. being here. Bye-bye.